Hi guys, Brian the Scare Lion back with another video and for those of you who don't know, last night was AEW's first pay-per-view double or nothing. There was a lot riding on this to see actually how good the brand would be uh, because beforehand we had a lot of mixed reaction, a lot of people saying that it was going to rival WWE, which is my opinion, and uh, a lot of people saying that it was nothing but a t-shirt company and things like that. Um, but no, we actually got an amazing night of wrestling last night. So here's what happened at uh, Double or Nothing. So we started off with the pre-show, the buy-in, uh, and the first match that we got on there was the Casino Battle Royale. We got a lot of great action in this, uh, and a lot, a lot of different little moments. We got um, we got this funny little moment with Orange Cassidy coming in and uh, putting these devastating, <laughs> absolutely devastating kicks on a Tommy Dreamer. No, honestly, there were, there were these little fucking tap things. It was funny as fuck. The segment was it was a throwaway segment, and but I it was fucking hilarious. We saw a lot of devastating spots, one of which was uh, the Luchasaurus fucking slamming Joy Janela through a table on the outside. Jesus Christ, it looked like it just about killed Janela. We got a lot of entrants that hyped up the crowd. We got uh, like Tommy Dreamer came out. Uh, when Sean Spears came out, uh, the crowd were fucking loving it. Sean Spears, uh, for those of you who are WWE fans, that's Ty Dillinger. Uh, Aye, everybody was fucking on the feet when he came out. Uh, we saw this funny moment from uh, Maiko Nakazawa, who, <laughs> kept, who kept pouring fucking baby oil on himself so that he could slip out his moves and shit. It, it, it was funny, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, Maiko Nakazawa ended up being the first person eliminated, eliminated by Sunny Days, who was eliminated just after that. Uh, we saw some great spots from people like uh, Jungle Boy. We saw Jimmy Havoc using a staple gun. <laughs> like the whole thing, it was it was so much fun. Uh, we got down to the final entrant, the wild card, and it turns out that it was the Hangman Adam Page. Adam Page comes in, say a, a, again a big pop, fucking because we didn't know what was actually going to be happening with Adam Page. We thought maybe he was going to be getting another match after the whole uh, Adam Page versus pack kind of fell through uh not gonna get into why but aye that match fell through so we were like up in the air on if he would get a replacement but no instead he ended up getting put into this partially i think it's kind of a shame i would have loved to have seen a singles match for uh adam page but with the way the direction of it all went it actually turned out to be Fucking brilliant. We thought that uh, Paige had uh, already won the match after he eliminated Luchasaurus. Uh, well, we didn't actually think that. Uh, they, they tried to show it like that, but uh, MJF had been on the outside, not over the top rope. He was just on the outside for the bottom rope. But uh, MJF ran back in, tried to throw uh, Paige over. Paige ended up getting back in the ring and eliminating uh, MJF. MJF, let's be honest throughout this, the heel work he did was fucking fantastic. I mean, I didn't really expect any less, but uh, aye, the heel work from MJF in this was fucking brilliant. And aye, we've got Hangman Adam Page actually heading forward for the shot at AEW's first championship, the World Championship. I cannot wait to see what happens with it. It's going to be fucking brilliant. The next match that we got on the buy-in was Kip Sabian versus Sammy Guevara. Um, again, this match was really good. Uh, it started out... It was less about the high flying techniques really and more about just actual wrestling, a lot of submissions gone on, which I felt was really good. It was a bit of a mix up because these two are great for high flying, but aye, it was nice to see them mixing it up and doing a lot of groundwork to start with. Of course we got to see a lot of high octane fucking moves, like uh, the attempted suplex to the outside where they both rolled over the ropes and then uh, Guevara actually hit a suplex on the outside to Kip Sabian. It was fucking brilliant. Like, it's those spots that you just hope you're going to get to see and I, it was it was pulled off brilliantly. And then we got to see Guevara hitting this sh like shooting star press on a uh, Kip Sabian who was laid out on the barrier on the outside of the ring. For me, I think that was the best spot in this full fucking match. Um, we ended up getting Kip Sabian with a win. 
And uh, it, it came after Guevara tried to do this uh, 630 splash, but Kip Sabian actually got his uh, knees up and hit Deathly Hallows into the 1, 2, 3. Great match. And then uh, for there we move on to the main show. First match that we got in the main show was SoCal Uncensored, SCU, versus the Strong Hearts. Again, a high out 10 match. The one thing that I absolutely loved in this match, that the match would go at a, a great pace. It was like just straight up nice pace. But out of nowhere, every now and then, fucking Strong Hearts would just blast with this high octane, full force pace. Uh, and the further we got into the match, the merit started to speed up. We, we saw so many high octane spots. Uh, one of the things that I, I, I was unsure about, like uh, my pick for this match was SCU. But one of the things that I had to think about was maybe the Stronghearts would actually get this because of the whole partnership between AEW and OWE because that partnership was just starting. I thought maybe uh, Stronghearts will actually pick this up just to get that little boost going forward. But we're going to see a lot more matches between uh, stars for AEW and OWE. Um, so I, I don't really think it hurts anybody to lose this match because we're going to get merrier in the future. But we ended up seeing Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian hitting best Meltzer onto El Lindemann and picking up the 1-2-3. Definitely not a bad way to go. Uh, it was a great start to the show. Next we move on to a match that I kind of hoped for more with. This was the triple threat women's match between Britt Baker, Smiley Kylie Ray, and uh, Nyla Rose. First we'll start with the best part. Um, those three came out and then Brandy Rose ended up coming out and she was in ring gear. We thought, oh, is Brandy Rose actually going to get involved in this match? But no, she ends up bringing out Awesome Kong. This was a big fucking moment, a big pop. Uh, aye, Awesome Kong is now signed with the AEW. What more could you ask for? Those of you again who are WWE fans, if you don't know who Awesome Kong is, you might remember her as Karma in WWE for a brief stint. I, uh, once she was announced into this, I thought this match is going to be absolutely brilliant. Don't get me wrong, there was a lot that was really, really good for this match. Uh, like We got to see them all teaming, uh, all the three original competitors teaming up to try to take out Awesome Kong. feel like that was a brilliant way to go with that. Um, I just feel like we could have got a little bit more. I mean, I'm, I'm probably asking too much. I might be asking too much, but I, I just have that feeling. A lot of people might disagree with me. Let me know if you disagree with me. Did you expect a little bit more or was this match just right for you? Ended up being Nyla Rose and Kong were actually taken out of the match. Uh, and the two left in the ring were Britt Baker and Kylie Ray. Take nothing away for Kylie Ray here. She actually did a really good job. But Britt Baker, I think, I think it was kind of obvious that Britt Baker was going to win this. Because it looked like they were heading forward with her being the face of the women's division. So I... I think we kind of know that Brett Baker was going to win this. Next we move on to the Best Friends versus Angelico or Angelico or however you say it and Jack Evans. Like before going into this match I didn't know who Angelico and Jack Evans were but leaving the match I can definitely tell you I'm a fan. Jesus Christ those two were fucking brilliant. Uh, the Best Friends obviously put on a great match as well but stars of this with Angelico and uh, Jack Evans you're probably getting pissed off with me if I'm pronouncing his name wrong here but oh god it was it was an amazing match it was like each time a spot was hit the other team would try to do something to make that spot even bigger for me the best move throughout this was uh, the crucifix into the cutter fucking loved it. Jack Evans took a lot, a lot of fucking moves here and yet still kept kicking it. It just, it showed heart within Jack Evans. I've, I don't know what it was like about this. It was fucking amazing and I walked away thinking, you know what, I can't wait to see what these two have got to offer in the future. Best Friends actually did end up winning this match, which for me, it was kind of a shame. I kind of wanted Angelico and uh, Jack Evans to walk away with the victory because of the show that they fucking put on. Don't get me wrong, best friends put on an amazing show, but the winners for me were them circus. Fucking hell. I got a big shock. I didn't know what to expect for them, and they were fucking brilliant. 
Next up, we had the six women tag, uh, Team Azure Kong versus Team Shida. I'm not going to go through the names because I think I've butchered enough names today. But I, uh, it was, a, it was a good match. It was a good match. Some points it felt a bit, maybe a bit sloppy, just maybe a tiny bit sloppy. But I, it was one of them. It was still a really good match. We got some high octane moves. Uh, I don't want to say any names because of the fact that I'm probably going to butcher them. Aja Kong is probably the only one that I'm not going to butcher. Uh, we did get to see a, a great little spot between Kong and uh, Shida where uh, the referee was distracted and uh, Kong had this little fucking metal thing and uh, Shida had the kendo stick and they both went at each other with it uh, but it ended up with Kong getting the better of that. We did see a weird false finish where uh, Team Magic Kong actually hit the pin uh, and the bell the bell was rang for a three count even though the ref had only counted to two and she held up to like it, it was a weird moment but I guess no everything can be fucking perfect uh, and this was the match that was a little bit mm, Team Shida ended up walking away with a victory after some miscommunication between Team Aja Kong and I, that, that's all I can really say about it. It, it was an alright match, but there was there was a lot in it that was pretty sloppy and a couple of uh, moments. The action itself though, really good. We now move on to the big surprise for me. This. This was match of the night for me, and I didn't know if I was, I didn't actually think I was going to say that. Uh, this was Cody versus Dustin, and honestly, honestly, I, I was, I was shocked with this match. Fucking Dustin Rhodes. When, when did you ever think you would say that, uh, after seeing Gold Dust in WWE for so long, when did you ever think you would say that match of the night, comes for fucking Dustin Rhodes. Everything in this match was perfect. We started it out with a video package, uh, them talking about uh, what this was for them. Uh, Cody saying like, I love my brother. This isn't brother versus brother. This is generation versus generation. I love that. I love that little story arc. You know what? I'm not kicking shit out of my brother the night. I'm kicking shit out of the Attitude Era. It, it felt real. The video package they put together felt so real. Pictures of him with Dustin, pictures of him and Dustin with the father. Like, everything was brilliant with that video package. Uh, then we get to the entrance. Uh, fucking Cody comes out. There's a chair that's Triple H esque. Fucking. I, I was like, what, what's going on here? They've got a Triple H esque chair. Um, but either they're admiring the chair, uh, him and Brandy. Brandy comes down to the ring, lifts up the apron, pulls out a sledgehammer. Again, another big fuck you to Triple H. Uh, then passes it to Cody, and then Cody goes up and demolishes the chair. Like he's literally smashing the fucking uh, Attitude Era and smashing Triple H, like, go fuck yourself, Triple H. It, it was one of them, it's the little moment that just makes you go, oh, shit. Uh, it was brilliant. Dustin came out in his brand new ring gear, uh, which meant pretty menacing ring gear. The red and black, I always love red and black, that mix. Uh, it, it does have this menacing feel to it, so it, it's got a great fucking place in wrestling for me. The match itself, we saw some amazing shit we saw uh, Brandy actually ended up getting thrown out of the match because she kept interfering uh, which I feel like was a great little bit of heel work because earlier on in the night we saw that Brandy had maybe gone a bit heel here so I, it was nice to see that little bit of heel work after uh, getting his head hit off of the middle ring the ring post what do you call it I'm a wrestling fan and I can't even think what it's called, like my mind's just gone blank. But I, he hit his head uh, after the exposed turnbuckle, after the exposed turnbuckle, uh, and it ended up causing him to be opened. Uh, it was a fucking mad blading job though, you could, like, yeah, it was obvious that it was a blading job. But fuck me, the blood that was pure pouring down his face. 
Uh, it was one of them. You, you sat there watching and thinking, the ref's going to have to fucking call this. The ref is going to have to call this at some point because the blood is literally just pouring down his face. And it's not like it stopped. The pouring continued throughout the fucking match. So, uh, you've got to hand it off to Dustin being able to fucking keep going with all that blood just literally dripping down. Throughout it, we saw D Dustin and Cody hitting some of the classics, but also hitting some uh, great new stuff that isn't really usually their forte. But I, um, I honestly don't know what I can say. That everything in this was fucking perfect. I ended up being Cody walking away with the victory after hitting crossroads onto Dustin. By the way, for uh, uh, we actually saw Dustin hitting crossroads a few times, which was brilliant. Um, and then after the match, we get this heartfelt moment where uh, Cody's saying that he's already put his name forward for a match at the next pay per view against the Young Bucks. Uh, he doesn't need a partner, he doesn't need a friend, he needs his big brother, and the bear for them are crying. It was a fucking brilliant feel-good moment. This is probably one of my favourite wrestling matches in history, uh, literally because everything about it was perfect. The storytelling, the video package at the beginning, uh, the actual in-ring action, everything felt fucking perfect for through this whole thing, so this... I, it's probably one of my favourite matches of all time. Next up, we have the unveiling of the AEW World Championship. Uh, Jack Whitehall was in the ring ready to announce it and he goes, uh, here to unveil the championship is the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. And Bret Hart comes out to the ring to this fucking huge pop. Nobody expected Bret Hart to be that. It was, it was one of those feel-good fucking brilliant moments big surprise and I, I f you just got to love it uh, he, he's in there t talking a little bit about the championship uh, how glad he is to be there for uh, unveiling the championship and then he brings out hangman Adam Page to unveil the championship but when Adam Page actually gets into the ring MJF's music hits and I thought oh shit here we go MJF comes out and he starts putting on some Fucking amazing heel work, even giving fucking Bret Hart pure shit. It, it was, it was some amazing heel work. Do you know what? I fucking loved it. As he's starting to walk away, we see Jungle Boy come out, uh, and then fucking Jimmy Havoc. All three of them, Page, Jungle Boy, and Havoc, have surrounded fucking MJF, and uh, MJF just gets his ass kicked. It's fucking brilliant. And then we actually see. The unveiling of the championship and do you know what i actually really really like the design it's how it should be done the design was fucking brilliant i'm no idea what most people are then gone the whole oh this is what a championship looks like the they're, they're on to a completely different levels so why compare the two you'll know what i'm talking about i don't want to say it but you'll know what i'm talking about um all right the championship looked really good though uh, i'm so pleased with the design. Now we move on to the AAA World Tag Team Championship match. This was between the Young Bucks and the Lucha Bros. And did we expect any less? Did we expect any less than some of the best fucking tag team wrestling that we've ever seen? They played the story so well as well. Like um, the Young Bucks have been out of action for uh, I think it was seven weeks, and they played on the ring rust a little. I do like that, the fact that there was a bit of miscommunication every now and then. Uh, it was mostly Nick hitting uh, Matt from what we saw, but I, it was there was a lot to go on for this match. We saw some big spots like the Young Bucks hitting the Pentagon driver onto Pentagon. Fucking brilliant. It was perfect fucking tag team wrestling. This is what tag team wrestling should be. Honestly, I could sit here and go for all the big spots that actually went on, but Jesus Christ, there was that many that I think it'd just been hard as fuck to try to go for every single one of them. Probably my favourite spot of the night from this match though was Matt Jackson hitting that brain buster on a uh, Ray Phoenix from the top rope. That looked devastating, I fucking loved it. 
I've said that so many times throughout this video, I fucking loved it. That just shows what this pay-per-view was. But we did end up seeing the Young Bucks walking away with a victory on this after hitting the Mel Meltzer driver onto uh, Phoenix and picking up the 1-2-3. A great match. Uh, the tag team division in uh, AEW, I feel like it's going to get a massive, massive, massive push. They've said that they want to reinvent the fucking tag team division, actually bring it up to what what it could be because we know that the tag team division could fucking rule it could end it could end up being like the fucking main event shit so i i can't wait to see where it goes for that one thing that i forgot to mention uh they've actually got a new rule with the tag team division in this um instead of a five five count after a tag is made for the person to leave the ring it's been up to a 10 count just one thing i thought i'd quickly mention here now we move on to what was the main event. Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega. Alpha versus Omega 2. Just the start of it. Literally just from the start of it. Fucking Jericho coming out, playing some of his fucking uh, greatest hits. Coming out as like fucking uh, 90s, early 2000s Jericho. And then the fucking lights go off. They come back up. And uh, we've got the list Jericho. They go off, come back up. He's there with his fucking uh, lit up jacket, the one with all the fucking lights on the back. And then it goes off and fucking Judas hits. A uh, brilliant fucking entrance. I think it was the best entrance that he could have fucking done. I absolutely loved it. The storyline gone into this way, Jericho thinking everybody should be thanking him for basically making AEW. I, I, I love it. This, this is Chris Jericho at his best. I don't care what anybody says. For me, this is his best character. We saw a lot of great countered finishers throughout this fucking match. A lot of high octane moves. Um, that, oh, that table spot. Jesus. Well, the first table spot. Chris Jericho pulling a table out for you under the ring. And then it gets fucking drop kicked into him. Uh, twice. And then, that, like, this fucking over the rope coup de gras. Fucking on a Chris Jericho who's underneath the table. Fucking brilliant. To be honest, it comes down to it again. Did we really expect any less? If you saw the first match, uh, Alpha Alpha versus Omega Wrestle Kingdom 12, you know how good these two are together. And the story building up to it is it, it's been fucking brilliant. Uh, I we couldn't expect any less. Uh, we ended up seeing Chris Jericho walking away with a victory. After hitting that fucking, um, what's it, what was it called? The Judas, the Judas effect. The Judas effect, like this fucking elbow. It was fucking, it's an impactful move. Like, there's, there's no flair with it. There's no fucking, boof, here's like this amazing move. It's literally, bam, and you're fucking done. Um, and this is after we've seen them uh, hit fucking cord breakers or have false fucking cord breakers where they were reversed. Like, honestly, th this match was fucking brilliant. And the weirdest thing to say is the match itself wasn't the best fucking part. This was an amazing fucking match. A fucking incredible match between two of the greatest superstars right now. And yet, the best part of the match was after it where fucking Chris Jericho is on the mic. And he's uh, saying that everybody should be thanking him. That he's made AEW what it is and all that lot. And then Moxley comes out through the fucking crowd. He still doing Jericho before hitting him with the fucking Dirty Deeds. Uh, is it still going to be called Dirty Deeds? Don't know yet. We need to see what happens here. Uh, they might change up the name. Who knows. But uh, he hits Dirty Deeds on fucking Jericho. Then he hits Dirty Deeds on to the ref. Then he goes to hit Dirty Deeds on fucking Kenny Omega. But Kenny Omega fucking stops him. And they both end up fighting on the outside of the ring. Uh, they get up to where the chips, the massive, massive double or nothing fucking poker chips are. He ends up hitting the Dirty Deeds on to fucking Kenny Omega on top of these chips. And then hits this big fucking... Eh, it's the only thing I can call it, is it? It's a fireman's carry. Hey, it's a big fireman's carry. He ends up hitting this onto the fucking... It just looks like this big steel fucking plate. It was the big feel-good moment. The big feel-good moment. I fucking thoroughly enjoyed it. 
we have got John fucking Moxley in AEW. If, the, the thing is, a lot of people were like, I knew it would happen, I knew it would happen. No, we hoped it would happen. There's, there's a big difference. We hoped it would happen. We didn't know what the hell was going on. There was rumours of him gone to AEW. There was rumours of him gone back to WWE. There was rumours of him not even actually... Uh, well, before we saw the video for John Moxley. But there was rumours of him not actually coming back to wrestling. There was re rumours of him not coming back to wrestling for a while because he's got this movie. Like, no one knew what was actually going to happen with him. So, I, when it hit, the fucking moment of the night, I fucking thoroughly enjoyed it. So, with all that being said, that was the end of the event. And WWE did need to pull the socks up. I'm going to say that this is the best thing that could happen for WWE, really. Uh, they've actually got some real competition from what it looks like. The, the first show from AEW looks like it was a fucking tremendous success. So it looks like they could end up rivaling WWE. I want it to happen because this could bring out the best in WWE. We could get to see some amazing storylines. WWE haven't really had any big competition ever since uh, WCW. Um, TNA kinda almost reached those heights. I mean, they did kinda rival them slightly, but we've not really seen anything WCW level, which is what I feel we could get with AEW. And if we don't, we've still got another amazing promotion. This is going to be a fucking fantastic promotion. It's going to be like the second top. And do you know what? I love it. There's not much more I can say on that. I absolutely love this event. I love to, I'm loving seeing where it's going to go going forward. And I, uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Um, did you think it was a great success? Did you think it was good? Did you think it was meh? Or did you think it was pure shit? I actually want to hear your opinions on this. Like I say, for me personally, fucking tremendous night. As for the forfeits, uh, it was actually Thomas who lost, so he will be taking both the chair shots and the face mask. Uh, we'll probably see that later on this week. Um, also, later on this week, we've got predictions coming for Takeover, Takeover, which will be happening next weekend. So, I stay tuned for that. Uh, but I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if she's dead, don't forget to butt fuck that like button. Peace.